Hello, I'm Cindy Arenberg seltzer President and CEO of the Children's Services Council of Broward County. Welcome to another edition of Future First, Focus on Broward's Children. Mosquitoes are a South Florida fact of life. The moist, tropical environment we enjoy year-round is an ideal breeding ground for these pesky insects. Protecting ourselves from mosquito-borne diseases while enjoying the many open spaces we avail ourselves of almost year-round is an essential part of South Florida living. Last year, we followed, not without fear, the trajectory of the latest mosquito-borne virus, Zika, and its potentially catastrophic effects on newborn babies. From South America through the Caribbean and finally to Florida, as carriers of Zika, malaria, chikungunya, dengue, and yellow fever, to name just some, mosquitoes may be small, but are truly animals to be feared. Here with me to discuss how to protect ourselves from mosquito-borne illnesses while still enjoying South Florida's open spaces are Dr. Paula Thatchy, Director of the Florida Department of Health in Broward County, and most importantly, a member of the Children's Services Council, Dan West, Director of the Broward County Parks and Recreation Division, and Ann Tan, Director of the Broward County Mosquito Control Division. Welcome to all of you. Dr. Thatchy, I want to start with you because clearly the Department of Health is a leader in this effort. Can you talk a little about what we have to worry about with Zika and what's being done? So first of all, as you said, Zika virus infection is a mosquito-borne illness. It can also be transmitted by sexual contact, by blood transfusion, and through pregnancy. And so in most people, actually in 80% of people that are infected with the Zika virus, they will have no symptoms. And for the other 20%, there'll be a mild viral illness, which would be common viral symptoms, fever, conjunctivitis, joint pain, rash, headache, and muscle pain. However, when a pregnant woman uh, contracts Zika virus infection, there's a possibility that the baby will be born with congenital Zika syndrome. And that can consist of a variety of sequela, which might include microcephaly, or a smaller than normal head size, abnormal brain tissue, and actually less brain tissue in some areas, mm -hmm. damage to the area behind the eye, uh, problems with joints and problems with increased muscle tone. Um, there are usually, uh, in non-pregnant folks, there are usually no complications of Zika virus infection. The infection usually lasts a few days to a week, but there is a rare neurological complication that can occur be called Guillain-Barre syndrome. And so Zika, uh, the availability of Zika virus testing has increased. At the health department, we offer on a daily basis at our State Road 84 campus free Zika testing for pregnant women. And pregnant women should be tested for Zika virus either if they have any symptoms or even if they have no symptoms, if they live or have traveled to an area where there is a, a risk of Zika virus infection or if they're having sexual relations with somebody who lives or travels in such an area. Otherwise, if you have symptoms or have traveled to such an area um, and you're not pregnant, then you should see your private physician. So something that struck me was you were talking about that you may not have symptoms. And of course, pregnant women get pregnant through contact with uh, a partner who would perhaps not have symptoms. So should men be looking at getting tested if they are engaging in uh, relations? And so it's been shown that Zika virus can actually be shed in semen up to six months or perhaps longer after infection. And so the best way for a pregnant woman to protect herself against Zika virus infection, besides mosquito protection, would be the consistent and correct use of condoms, particularly if she's, uh, her partner uh, is either lives or has traveled to an area where Zika transmission is occurring. Pregnant women should be tested for Zika, again, if they have symptoms or even if they have no symptoms and they live in or have traveled to an area of Zika transmission or their partner um, has done so. So is it really, um, it's once they are pregnant, not getting pregnant? I mean, that's, I guess, what struck me is that you get pregnant and, and contract it in the process of getting pregnant. 
you can contract Zika in the process of getting pregnant. It is sexually transmitted. And so again, pregnant women who live in such an area or travel to or have a partner mm -hmm. who does so should be tested. At the health mm -hmm. department, we offer free Zika virus testing for pregnant women. Really important. Great. And then mosquito protection is absolutely critical. And mosquito protection, that brings us to mosquito control, I would say. Tell us, Dr. Sure. Anton. Now, um, the primary method of transmission for Zika is still the mosquito, a particular type of mosquito, the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And the challenge for us is that, as Dr. Daji mentioned, most people, in fact, 80%, have no symptoms at all. So if you have no symptoms, you may not know that you are a carrier for this virus. If you get bitten by the right type of mosquito, that mosquito can then potentially pass that on to another person. So that's the challenge for mosquito control right now. That's why we're reaching out to the community for help um, to uh, educate people on how to protect themselves because it's a, a very particular type of mosquito. It's not any mosquito. And we have... 40 type of species of mosquito in our area, but one in particular is the one that carried this virus. For the lay person, I mean, all I know is something's on my arm and I slap it. <laughs> How would I know if it was that kind of mosquito? Sure. You won't know, but here's, here's some differences between this mosquito that carried the virus versus other mosquitoes. Number one, they bite all day long. So spraying for them as an adult mosquito is not as effective because when do you spray for them because they're moving around, flying around all day long. Number two, they're a container breeder. So they like very small area of water, uh, not in the lakes or big ponds or even a, a vacant swimming pool. They like small container water and they breed and live around people's home. So for the best way to um, prevent Zika is just to empty water around your homes to keep them from breeding in the first place. Uh, the second method of, of, of handling them is to introduce a larvicide product uh, because as I what said- What is that? I don't, I don't sure. Know. It's to, there's two ways to get rid of mosquito. One is to kill them where they're an adult. The other way is to get rid of them where they're before they become an adult, where they're just in a larvae stage. They're swimming around looking for a food source to um, become an adult. At that point, they're in one location in the small container of water. If you introduce, number one, if you empty that water, they won't become a mosquito. Two, if you can't or it becomes too much of a nuisance, then just add a larvicide, which is a natural uh, product that we recommend to introduce that, in that to that container, um, such as Where would Rengar. you get something like that? Sure, you can buy them on Amazon. Uh, or for folks that need it or cannot afford it, uh, Broward County Mosquito Control, using a grant that we have from the State Department of Health, uh, have bought um, a stockpile of these to give out to at-risk populations such as pregnant women, uh, women with childbearing age, or folks that may not have air conditioning. Uh, we're reaching out to the community to hand these things out, or if you contact us, we'll make sure you get one. So this is an area I'm really not familiar with. Normally on this show, we're talking about programs that I know inside out. So I'm going to be the dumb consumer on this one. What do I do with that? First of all, what would I look for on Amazon or what would I ask you for? Does Larvacite, is that a, is that a brand name or is that a product that could go under a lot of different names? A Larvacite is what we call a product that killed the larvae. And there's a number of them out there. Um, you can buy them even at Home Depot. Uh, they look like, well, uh, I think they're labeled mosquito dunks. Uh, but there's also smaller tablets you can buy on Amazon. And you just put in Amazon, uh, Larvasi, uh, mosquito, it will come up. Uh, there's different products. The one that we like to use is an organic product. And it's made for, in fact, it was designed for the World Health Organization for drinking water supply. So and do safe. you do that? Would you see the mosquitoes or you just, if there's water there, stick this in just so you are preventing them from coming? The best way is just to stick them in. Um, rain gutter, grill, pool toys, um, bird bath. Uh, if you have a little um, flower part that's outside because you may not be able to see the larvae at that point as they're, because the female mosquito will lay her eggs the eggs would then eventually, within days, become the larvae. 
So when you're looking at that location where the water is, you might not see the larvae at that point. But if you drop the larva sign there, it will sit there and it will wait for the larvae to swim around looking for a food source. And when they eat this, it destroys the digestive system. So they don't become adult mosquito. So wow. as we say, if they don't fly, they don't bite. <laughs> ah, good point. And it's not that the mosquito is sick. When you talk about mosquito born, you mean they bite somebody who has the illness and then they travel to somebody else and bite them, right? So people that have a Zika virus infection usually have um, high levels of the virus in their blood for about a week. And so when the, mosquito, the correct mosquito, either Aedes aegypti or albopictus, bites them, the mosquito is then going to be able to transmit the virus to somebody else. And so it's very important. Dumping the water is critical. Wearing mosquito repellent and making sure that window and door screens are intact. And what we really want to emphasize, because a lot of folks in our community travel to places where Zika virus transmission occurs. And so while they're there, they need to be protecting themselves. And then when they come home, for at least three weeks after they've been home, we really want them to avoid getting bitten by a mosquito in case they have contracted Zika and are not symptomatic, um, wear mosquito repellent so that they're not bitten by a mosquito here and then the mosquito doesn't transmit um, the virus. So protecting yourself during travel and then protecting yourself when you get home, dumping the water, wearing repellent, and then making sure that your screens are intact um, are absolutely critical. So, Dan, I want to get you in here yeah. and hear about what Parks and Rec is doing, but this seems like a really important time for us to watch a video about drain and cover, given what we've just been talking about. So I just want to direct our attention to the screen for a moment to see this video that we produced with Dr. Thatchy a few months ago about the drain and cover campaign, and when we come back, we'll talk about what Parks and Rec are doing. Okay. Did you know that some viruses are transmitted by the bite of an infected mosquito? These include dengue, chikungunya, West Nile virus, as well as Zika. The best way to protect yourself and your family from mosquito-borne illnesses is to avoid mosquito bites and to prevent mosquitoes from multiplying. The Florida Department of Health recommends drain and cover. Drain any sources of standing water in and around your house. Sources of standing water can be bottles, cans, pools, bird baths, pet bowls, and many others. These need to be drained or thrown away. Cover your skin with clothing, long sleeves, long pants, socks. Spray your clothing with an EPA-approved insect repellent and also spray bare skin according to the label instructions. Do not use insect repellent on children less than two months of age. Instead, protect them with clothing and with mosquito netting. To apply insect repellent to children's faces who are more than two months of age, spray it on your hands first. Do not apply it to children's mouths, to their hands, or to cut or irritated skin. Cover windows and doors with screens and make sure that those screens are intact. Remember, drain and cover to prevent mosquitoes from multiplying and to protect yourself and your family from mosquito-borne illnesses. For more information, visit floridahealth.gov, cdc.gov, and epa.gov. So, so far we've really been focusing on the home and the individual. But Dan, I want to bring you in here because, of course, as I said in the opening, we want to enjoy our Florida world, and the parks are just the greatest place for us to go. So what's happening in the parks to protect us? Well, I, I think uh, it's always interesting. I talked to Anton and Dr. Thackey. And you always see the, uh, the most, I think, important points is obviously insect repellent is number one. We always even try to convey that to guests when they always ask, because it's a, it's a topic that whenever, whenever a patron comes to a park, they always ask us, is it safe? You know, is it safe to be outdoors? Obviously it is. We have really literally millions of visitors that visit parks in Florida, in South Florida especially. We've got 31 municipalities. We've got uh, parks, sawgrass to seagrass. We have very few occasions when we have problems, but it is good when you're in an outdoor environment to really protect yourself, whether you're going out on a nature trail or if you're spending time at a beach or even at one of our lakes. 
The good thing is, I think it's important to always note that in any kind of outdoor environment, wherever you're at, in a park or anywhere, you just, you just need to use good common sense. And we do that with not just every, not even mosquitoes, but even native uh, species. And we have a lot of different animals that uh, are in our parks and uh, wildlife. And we always just tell people, be alert, understand where you're at, wear sun protection as well as, as uh, insect repellent. I think you'll be fine. Uh, but uh, we obviously have a lot of people that ask questions. We work very closely with uh, Anton and his staff on uh, protecting the environment as much as we can, but we are in an outdoor environment. We've got 6,500 acres of uh, parklands. Many of that, about a half of that, are natural area sites. So you, you always are constantly aware of where you're at, but most of our guests wear long sleeve clothing when they're out on trails and other other areas, that's always a good idea anyway. And if you're at a, a beach or any other place, again, using the insect repellent and other, uh, other ways to protect your kids and, and yourself. And I would imagine it would be helpful if the guests would also be careful of where they're leaving cups of water and cleaning right. up after themselves so that they don't right. create breeding grounds that you're well, fighting against. And I think that's what we do. We do safety audits in our parks where we try to, that's something we've been kind of taught by our own colleagues here, is to go out, have our staff go out, uh, look at the areas where we have a lot of guests, try to keep uh, you know minimal amount of areas where you have open containers or anything, trash cans where you might collect water, anything like that. We do that as much as we can, but again, it always falls back to, or it comes back to uh, using safety when you go out into an area. But uh, we've been pretty fortunate in South Florida. We've got, uh, as I said, lots of uh, land from sawgrass to seagrass, and amazingly, uh, we've had very few incidents. But like everything else, it's safety first, and we say that wherever you go. Talking about the number of incidences, Paula, we were talking before, you know, it sounds really scary, and in my opening, I made it sound very scary, but Broward County itself has not been infested to date, correct? So when in 2016, in Broward County, we had 181 cases of travel-associated Zika virus infection and one case that was locally acquired. So we had no sustained local transmission. So far in uh, 2017, we have 10 travel-associated cases. And really, that's due to the efforts uh, and the partnership that we have um, between the Health Department and Broward County Mosquito Control, Broward County Parks. We have worked together um, so closely. Basically, for every suspect case of Zika virus infection that gets reported to the Health Department, we immediately inform Broward County Mosquito Control. Their folks go out um, many times with our environmental health folks as well. And so they're trapping mosquitoes to see whether or not there are the type that carry Zika virus infection. They're mitigating standing water. They're using larvicide. They're spraying um, with backpacks if it's appropriate. And so that's happening for every suspect case um, within 300 yards of, of the address. So that's an, an amazing amount of work. And I really want to compliment Broward County Mosquito Control. Um, I always say that they have an endless capacity for um, for work because um, they're always they're always available and they always do what's required. And so we're at the same time we're investigating those disease reports and um, we're doing the appropriate testing in terms of our epidemiology program, public education. All of us have worked together. Um, on have brought a door hanger um, with him. We, we at the health department have put out over one million flyers and palm cards into the community in four languages about mosquito uh, protection. We've done many presentations to the community and meeting some of them jointly. We've trained lots of volunteers um, about how to educate uh, their neighborhoods in door-to-door -door, um, education. We've educated the healthcare provider community. We've actually visited each and every OBGYN practice at least twice to provide the physicians with education and educational uh, materials for the patients as well. We have a database at the health department of thousands of healthcare providers. We're constantly, e constantly emailing them um, <laughs> updates about Zika uh, and other issues. And then we're available 24 seven for consultation um, for our hospitals, our emergency rooms, and then the testing for pregnant women. So there's a lot of partnership that's going on. Um, and that's, it's not by accident that 
Broward County didn't have any sustained local transmission of Zika virus infection uh, in 2016. And now's our opportunity to gear up for 2017 as we approach the rainy season. Yeah, I gotta tell you one thing that strikes me is people question all the time, what does government do? What's the point of government? I don't know, I don't see it. And here it is. I mean, that is amazing. And you are coming together to prevent public health outbreak. Oh. Um, I just have to commend Broward County and the state of Florida Health Department in Broward County. Yeah. Absolutely, to, to carry on what Paula just said, as their staff go in to educate the OBGYN offices because those are the at-risk populations, uh, they provide us with a list and a database of these physicians. We follow right behind that and educate them and give our larvicy product because we want to make it easy for people. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say empty, 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 and, but we realize everybody's busy. Uh, there are times when you're not going to have time to do that, so we provide the Larvacide product, and it's a service that Broward County provides free of charge. And if they, if there's, um, and then we follow right behind um, Dr. Thatchy's group in, in, in that effort. And are also we're partnering with the parks to Great. give out Larvacide and educate people um, in fact, we were there last Sunday at yes. Devil Oak Parks together um, to give our larvicide and introduce people to uh, this is a serious disease that's here. As, uh, it's mostly mosquito-borne, and it's not difficult to empty water and treat it with a larvicide around your homes. I think I'd be remiss if we didn't broaden a little bit outside of Zika as well. I mentioned a lot of other mosquito-borne illnesses, and I think probably guests uh, or our viewers might wonder too, you hear about spraying, and I'm sure they're, they must be wondering, what is that about? When do you spray? Why do you spray? How dangerous is that to people? Could you address that a sure. little bit? Um, the, when we spray, whether it's by truck or by air this past season, it's with a larvicide product, and it's an organic material. It's the long name, but it's called BTI and it is safe for pets, it's safe for human, it doesn't kill other insects. In fact, it doesn't even kill mosquitoes. What it does is to kill the larvae of the mosquitoes. Uh, and that's what we use in our plane, mostly. Uh, we also put that in our truck. We're gonna, we have outfitted our fleet of trucks this upcoming season to reach those hard to place, hard to reach places or area where there's heavy tree canopy that airplane spray might not get to. Which because we have going a lot on of foot, Broward. It, it is. <laughs> yes. As wonderful as it is, uh, it does provide some challenges when you spray by airplane. So um, we partner with, with training other folks. There's a group of volunteers. Uh, we're reaching out to. We're training folks not just at parks, but also at the airport and at the port, where we tend to get a lot of visitors. Great. We only have a couple of minutes left. Dan, did you have something else that you would like to add? Well, I think uh, just uh, generally when you go out into the outdoors, it's always good to first, uh, you always stop by the park office. We have a number of brochures we, we hand out, like the leaflets and other things that we can, door hangers. We always have that material available. Sometimes guests will do that. Sometimes they don't know what, uh, in, in an outdoor environment, what to do, and uh, the safety precautions are a few that are, you know, just like with your children, always uh, know that there's wildlife out there, but at the same point, as long as you follow the easy precautions of just staying away from the water, keeping your dogs on a leash, all the other things we always say that are really important, it's true, and it's just like keeping sun repellent out, have insect repellent, a lot of guests don't have that handy, and we always try to make sure that uh, that's available in our parks. Uh, so it's just a matter of common sense, and I think in, in the outdoors, uh, and we've got a great outdoors here. I mean, it's, it's some of the best parks I can, I've, I think I've seen around the nation, but uh, it's just taking those precautions and, and knowing where you're at in the outdoors. Excellent. Paul, I'm gonna give you the opportunity for the last word in our last couple of minutes about other, if you wanna to speak to any of the other diseases and things that they should look out for or any other public health announcements while you have the opportunity? Well, basically, you mentioned other mosquito-borne illnesses. And when um, we test for Zika, we're also testing for those other mosquito-borne illnesses. And I would just echo what everybody else has said. Um, take these steps to protect yourself and your family. These mosquitoes breed around your house, and they bite all the time, not just at dusk and dawn. Dump out the standing water. If you can't, put larvicide in it. Use mosquito repellent. 
make sure your windows uh, screens and your door screens are intact. Um, if you're pregnant, certainly consult your health care provider, get tested as appropriate. Um, and if you are traveling, make sure that you protect yourself when you travel, you protect yourself when you come home as well. These are strategies that worked last year, and we need to make sure to continue those strategies here in Broward County uh, as we approach uh, the rainy season. And we, as you said before, for a non-pregnant woman, or I mean, for a man or a woman who's not pregnant, most of, the, uh, or at least Zika, is not dangerous. Right, so 80% of people are asymptomatic, but if you have symptoms uh, and you're not pregnant, and you have either traveled to an area with Zika virus transmission, live in an area with Zika virus transmission, or have a sexual partner who has that, then you should seek out testing from your physician. If you're pregnant, you can seek out testing from your physician or free at the Florida Department of Health in Broward County uh, campus on State Road 84. The perfect place to end the show. <laughs> Thank you so much. Obviously, mosquitoes and the harmful viruses they carry must be taken seriously. Taking basic precautions when enjoying outdoor living is a small price to pay in comparison to the worst effects of some of the mosquito-borne diseases. I want to thank Dr. Paula Thatchy, Mr. Dan West, and Mr. Anton for talking to us about how to protect ourselves from mosquito bites and the diseases that they can bring. I've been your host, Cindy Ehrenberg-Seltzer. For this or any other episode of Future First, Focus on Broward's Children, go to our website, www.cscbroward.org, where you can access our YouTube channel. I hope you'll like us on Facebook, and remember to join us next time on Future First, Focus on Broward's Children. Mm -hmm.